So let's talk about how exactly optic oriented PHP looks like compared to procedural PHP on the technical side of things. Roughly speaking, when we want to code anything using PHP, we have three things we actually do when we code PHP. We connect to the database or we query the database. We get input from the users, which means that the user does something on the website, and then we need to do something with that data the user sends to us. And then the last thing we do is we show things on the website to the user. And now when we do talk about these three things we can do using PHP, in some cases we do all three things at once. For example, the user goes to a website, gets an input where they need to search for a bunch of names. They would then search for a bunch of names and give us some data. We would then query the database and then show the list of names from the database to the user afterwards. And in other cases, we only do two of the different things we do using PHP. For example, we have a login system. The user would go to the login system. We would get the data from the user and we would insert it inside the database, but we wouldn't show anything to the user afterwards. And again, in other cases, we might just query the database and then show some data to the user after they're logged in inside the pages inside the website without the user actually submitting anything to us and we just sort of show it to them. So now getting back to talking about procedural PHP versus object oriented PHP. When it comes to procedural PHP and we have a page, we would usually do all these three things in the same place inside the code. Whereas if we were to go and use object oriented PHP, we actually take these three tasks and we split them into separate files. And then we have the different task categorized inside classes, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will talk about classes. So don't worry if you don't know what classes are. Uh, but we categorize these into different classes and use them independently. And this is what makes it possible for us to reuse code later on. Because let's say we have a website where we want to show a list of names to the users inside the website. Then on another page, we want to show the exact same list of names in that page. If we were to do it the procedural way, in that case, it would actually go inside one page, we would query the database, and we would show the list of names to the user. Then when we go to the other page that we have inside our files, we would do the exact same code, whereas in object oriented, we just simply link to the code that we have inside our separate files, and then we link to the code inside the separate files. So we just have the code in one place, but we link to it instead. Now, I do really think the best way to sort of illustrate this is to actually show what exactly happens inside the code. So let's go and take a look at some code that I wrote here, just a basic PHP example. Now, as you can see behind me here, we do actually have a basic procedural PHP way of getting data from a user and then going into the database and then grabbing a list of names and spitting them out inside the website, depending on what name the user gave us. Now, as you can see, we do all these three things that I mentioned in the same place. This means that we, at the top here, actually connect to the database. We then get the data from the user, we query the database, and then we show the list of names to the user. We do all of this in the same place, which means that the next time we want to do this on a separate page, we have to do this exact same block of code one more time in that other page. And that's just duplicating the code. And now suddenly we have more code on the website than in reality we should really have. In this other example here, you can see that we have a object oriented example. Inside the page, you can see we do very little. Huh, there's not a lot of code going on in here. So the essential thing that's happening here is that we have all these different things that we're doing, like I said, in separate files. We have what is called a controller file which is what actually controls the input that we get from the user. So when a user goes to a website and feeds us a name that they want to query the database for, we handle that using one file or one class because there's one class inside one file. Then when it comes to actually connecting to the database, we have a separate file for that called the model. The model does nothing except connecting to the database and querying the database. And we can reuse this code as many times as we want, meaning that if I want to query for the list of names in multiple places inside my website, I can use the exact same code from the model, which is kind of nice. And then lastly, we have a view page or a view file, which is what actually goes in, grabs the data from the database and shows it to the user inside the website. So we have these three separate files. And really what I want to try and do with this episode here is kind of get the point across because I know that when you get into object oriented programming for the first time, it can be a little bit difficult getting into the concept of having separate files to do separate things. But trust me, 
when you actually learn it, this is going to be your preferred way of doing things. Now, having talked about how object oriented PHP works, let's actually talk about design patterns. When it comes to object oriented programming in any language, there's design patterns. In PHP, the most popular one is the one called the MVC model, which stands for model view controller. Ha, huh, that's the same names that the files I just mentioned. Now, before we get into talking about the MVC model, at least in a more technical aspect, let me go ahead and tell you a story. Inside a company, we have three different people working. We have one guy who's the CEO. He knows everything there's to know about the company. He knows all the company secrets and no one else in the company is allowed to know these secrets. Then we have the salesperson. He's the guy who takes care of the different company secrets and shows the ones that is allowed to be showed to the person who comes in to buy something inside the company. Now it's important to note here, as soon as this guy, the salesperson, gets company secrets and shows it to the customer, he forgets about the company secret. He knows nothing about it and all the knowledge about the secret goes back to the CEO. And then we have the third guy. He's the guy when a customer comes into the store, not to buy something, but to sell something. He's the guy who takes care of actually purchasing stuff from the customer and giving it back to the CEO. So we have these three people working inside the company and they know nothing about each other. Again, depending on what kind of design pattern we're talking about here, they don't know anything about each other. So with this story told, what I wanted you to sort of catch from it is that we have these three different files that does separate things. We have the CEO, which is the model. We have the uh, guy that purchases from the customers, who is the controller. And then we have the guy who actually sells to the customer, who is the view. So we have three different people or three different files or classes. Don't worry, we'll get to talk about classes later, who has each their task when it comes to the MVC model. Now, there is one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to the MVC model, which is something that actually caused quite the civil war down in my comment section of the last video where I talked about the MVC model, because there was two groups of people who had learned the MVC model in two different ways. And it's very important for me to get this clear so there's no questions about it when you watch this video. After listening to the story I just told, you might be asking, well, the MVC model can be done in a different way. And you are right, because there's two different ways you can actually do the MVC model. Remember, this is more or less just a design pattern. So it's not that tight when it comes to a specific way of doing things, but you should probably stay within the two different patterns that I'm about to mention in order to do the MVC model the same way as other people do it. Do remember the MVC model or the design pattern is here to make it easier to work with other people. So if you do the design pattern in a different way than most people do it, it becomes a little bit tough to work with other people. So when it comes to these two different ways you can do the MVC model or the design pattern, in both examples, the model is the one that takes care of the database, meaning that anytime you need to query anything from the database, whether it being selecting, updating, inserting into the database, the model is the one that takes care of this. No other class or file is allowed to see what is going on inside the database. It's very important that all the database stuff is being handled by the model or the CEO, as I call it. But when it comes to the controller and the view, there's two different ways that people do it. One way is where the controller gets the input from the user and then does something to update the database or something by communicating that to the model. And if something needs to be shown inside the website to the user, let's say the user search for a list of names, then the controller is the one that gets the data from the model and gives it to the view, which then shows it to the user inside the website. But there is another way to do it, which is the one that I usually like to do when I use the MVC model. The other way is where the controller gets the information from the user and updates or inserts into the database whatever it has to do in order to get the data from the user to the database. The view then communicates with the model in order to get data that has to be shown inside the pages inside the website and then shows it to the user. So the controller doesn't get the data and feeds it to the view. Instead, the view gets the data directly from the model. And like I said, it's important that people don't start freaking out in the comments because their teacher showed them to do it in this one way and I decided to do it in another way because they are both valid ways to do it. 
it really depends on how you decide to, to set up your project. And I just want to say it is really a minimal difference it is, whether the controller is the one that feeds the view or the view just gets the data directly from the model. It's really not that important and it doesn't really make any big changes to your project security wise or anything else like that. So, you know, it doesn't really matter which model you choose. The one I will be focusing on in this course though is the one where the view gets the data from the model, not the controller to feed the view. And before you freak out, don't worry if you don't understand what I say about the MVC model in this video here. We will get to do practical examples where you'll get more hands-on knowledge on what exactly the model view is and how it works when it comes to actual building websites. So eventually we will get to a point where you get to use the MVC model in a bit more practical sense so you can understand it better. So with all this said, in the next many videos, I will be teaching about classes, properties, and methods. And if you can't quite see how they're supposed to be used inside a real website after I've taught it in the next many episodes, don't worry too much about it. Eventually in about 13 episodes or so, we'll get more into how to actually use what you're about to learn inside real websites. So if you can't quite see how it's supposed to go together and how it's supposed to replace procedural PHP, don't worry, we will actually get to that point. Just keep watching the videos. If it doesn't make sense right now, it will eventually, at some point, it's just gonna make sense to you and it will just sort of click and everything falls into place and you know everything there is to know about object-oriented programming. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.